come before you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Advent 3, special thing in year B, where we get John the Baptist back to back. It's just what you were hoping for, I'm sure. You probably noticed I didn't say too much about him last week, so you knew, you knew it was coming, right? I mean... I, I don't know about you, but like, even as a, well, maybe especially as a, as a preacher and someone who tries to wear their faith on their sleeve, like, this, this description is like what nightmares are made out of, right? Like, uh, this whole in, exchange, like, to actually be doing something because of your faith and then not only be, like, questioned about it, but then confronted and, and uh, but, but you got to appreciate the boldness with which John answers, I'm the one of... I'm the, I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make way, make straight the way of the Lord. Now, if that's not enough, you know, that, that notion of uh, living into our own call with the same sense of conviction that John the Baptist is, we're going to hold it in tension with this uh, re second reading from 1 Thessalonians, where it says, rejoice always, remember what John was feeling, rejoice always, remember what John was feeling. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Well, that might be easier if we're going to do it like John did. But give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's harder to do when the Pharisees come knocking and ask who you are and what you're up to. Hard enough to probably live into this rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. Because, well, frankly, sometimes... We don't feel like it, right? I mean, even, even in the best of times, there's uh, subtle reminders of life's challenges. There's uh, just troubles in, in daily living, frustrations of, of everyday tasks, not to mention uh, the anxiety that many live with uh, in normal times, let alone in a, in a busy time of year with holidays and things. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances. No pressure. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Amen. No. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. It may, it may help a bit to be reminded that our praying without ceasing does not require us to say, Dear Lord, or end uh, with Amen. This is an encouragement to live a life that is framed in prayer that may begin, dear God, and end in amen. But it is also to say that our very living becomes a prayer when we try our very best to align all that we do and all that we are with the call of the gospel and who Jesus instructs us and models for us to be an embodiment of the love of God. Boy, if that's prayer, then it certainly also makes the rejoice always and giving thanks a bit easier as well, as we endeavor to embody the way, the truth, and the life that we see in Jesus. And still, it challenges us. A couple of reflections from the week that may help uh, articulate some of this for us. I, I was having a, a great conversation with somebody from Ascension, and they had noticed that on paper, uh, my name had words around it, and then in person, some people call me different things. They said, are you a priest or a pastor? And I said, yes. <laughs> no, I was, I didn't say it quite like that, but I said, well, in the Episcopal tradition, I am considered a priest, and they said, but there's other words around your name on your email, and I said, yeah, that's where it gets weird, right? Because on paper, the ordained of the Episcopal Church are the reverend and then the name, and then we add other things in depending if they're, you know, if you're a bishop, they put the right in front of reverend, and if you're a, uh, a dean of somewhere, you're the very reverend, and so on and so forth. We'll leave all that to the side for now. We'll park that for like a confirmation class or something. But the reverend, no, nobody calls me the reverend in person, and, and, and while some go by that, it would be a little jarring to me, uh, but it is an indication of my ordination, that is my priesthood, and they said... Uh, but what do I call you? And I said, you can call me Paul. Some call me Father Paul. Some may call me Pastor Paul. All of those 
It depends on your piety, and it matters less to me. I'd like to align myself a little bit with John. Who do these people say that you are? And, and, and Paul saying, uh, uh, a, a child of God? You know, like, for, I'm, I'm right there with you. So I know for some, titles are, are more important than others. The, the title rector is interesting, too, because you have to be a priest to be a rector, and, and, but it's a particular part of the call, right? So on the, the Sabbath, for example, the, the rector part of my calling is my work, and so I try to set it aside. And some of you who've seen me on Friday, I said, well, we could talk about anything but the church, right? That's to say you can still talk about God and Scripture, and certainly there are a lot of other interesting things to exchange thoughts about, but uh, you can't set aside one's priesthood on your day off. It's still in very much a part of who you are in the same way you don't ever set aside your baptism. It, it is inextricably linked with you, who you are as a child of God. And it is good cause to rejoice always. Maybe the high calling of it is to pray without ceasing. And to give thanks in all circumstances. I would like to say just a little bit more about the Gospel of John in light of all of this. Now, I, I like all of the Gospels, and I'm glad we get a portion of each of them over the course of our lectionary cycle. John, John, as much as I love him, he'd be a very boring Christmas pageant. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be one child dressed in black, perhaps a beret. The word became light, and they just have a long monologue, right? It, it, it's actually part of my favorite way of thinking of the Christmas story, but it, it's not the, the pageantry uh, and uh, the uh, exaltations of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that uh, help us to understand his childhood, his birth narrative, and the author of the Gospel of John is quick to name John the Baptist and say John was one who aligns with what we know to be true of the coming of the Messiah. There's this prophecy, one who comes to prepare the way. He's there. John, the author of the Gospel of John says to prepare people for the light, to prepare people to understand and receive Jesus as the Messiah. We, we need some preparation in order to receive Jesus most fully because otherwise we put up our guard and we're not always ready to let Jesus in. So John, John comes to prepare an entire people, a nation, uh, uh, to come and follow Jesus as the Messiah, to prepare their hearts and minds. And for, for ages, I've thought of this, uh, this scene captured in the Gospels about John out in the wilderness as kind of maybe a season of life. You know, he was out there for a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months. And in, in reading about it this week, I, I learned that, in fact, it was probably more like a couple of years and perhaps even a couple of decades that he was out there. And if you've ever tried to share your faith and felt like it maybe fell on deaf ears, I'll remind you, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus, did so for a very long time. Yes, he got people's attention. Yes, people came out into the wilderness to hear him. Yes, people repented and were baptized by him, but it was his life's work to prepare people for the coming of the Messiah, and it took a while. And he did so. Author of Gospel of John names him as John, but John himself is as if to say, my name's not important because there's something else that is so important. Who I am doesn't matter. What I'm here to tell you is what matters. He's saying, I am not the Messiah. And they come asking, who are you? And they start to ask, what then? Are you Elijah? And they say, I, I, he says, what then? Are you Elijah? He says, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answers, no. I'll point out to you, his answers keep getting shorter. <laughs> right? He's getting impatient, perhaps. He starts out, you know, I am not the Messiah. I'm not. And uh, no, just simply no. And they say, well, well who, what, am I, what are we supposed to tell people? Tell them. I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. <clears throat> May it be said of us also that we're the voice of one crying out and clearing a path in this season of Advent for others 
to find and experience the fullness of God's grace, mercy, and love. Each in our own way. The Pharisees may come in their own forms, in their own times, and in their own ways to question us. May we endure in sharing the very real presence of God that we have experienced, that they may also experience this love of God. Because indeed, as we embody the love of Christ and share it with those who surround us in this place, in our families, in our community, in our living. We'll have cause to rejoice always. It will cause us to pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. Amen.